So today is my birthday. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I will tell you that I'm in my older 40s. Today we're going to make a bum cake. Stay tuned. Okay, so like I said, today is my birthday and I'm making my own cake today and it's going to be a chocolate bundt cake. So we're going to start out with two cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of sugar, we have one teaspoon of baking soda, we have three-fourths teaspoon of salt, a half a cup of butter, we have a half a cup of vegetable oil, we have a half cup of milk with a half teaspoon of lemon juice to make uh, somewhat of a uh, buttermilk, we should say, but it's not. And let's see, we have two teaspoons of vanilla extract. We have two room temperature eggs. We have a third of a cup of unsweetened cocoa. And we have a package of chocolate chips for now. We're going to make a ganache later also. We're going to use one cup of those as we're making the cake. And I just kept up the cocoa because we're going to be greasing and putting the cocoa powder in the bun pan. It's just so the cake doesn't stick to it. So let's put you back on the tripod and let's get cooking. So first things first, what you want to do is take some non-stick... Alexa, stop. So my Alexa was going off because my half a cup milk mixture with the lemon juice is... Um, what you want to do is add your lemon juice to your milk and let it sit for 10 minutes. So let's get back to my pan. Spray liberally. Put that aside. Take some of your cocoa. Not too much. You don't really need too much. And what you're doing with that is you just want to shake that around. Okay, that should be good. Set that aside. Now you'll also want to preheat your oven. Just preheat your oven to 350. So in your mixing bowl, you want to add your two cups flour, two cups sugar. Add your one teaspoon of baking soda. And add your three-fourths teaspoon of salt. Little baker's hint, if you like cinnamon, you can add some cinnamon to that now. So we're just gonna whisk, whisk this up. Incorporate everything together. Set that aside. Okay, so now we're over at the stove. I have my burner set at a medium high or medium low if you want to go the other way. And what you want to do now is melt one stick of butter. Right, so we're going to start melting that down. We're going to add our oil. And in the same cup, I'm going to get a cup of water. Okay, so the way that's melting down too, let's get the water in there. A high temp on the burner. Let's whisk in our cocoa powder. You want to bring this up to just a boil so I can hear it just getting there. It has that little distinct sound. Take off the burner. So I'm going to take you and my pot back over to the table. So now what we're going to do is start putting everything right into the flour mixture. So I have my whisk, my milk, and my little bit of lemon juice. Add that in there, the vanilla, take your cocoa mixture, pour that straight on in, start whisking that up, make sure you scrape your sides, incorporate everything, add in your eggs, there's one egg, add your other egg, So you want to mix this up for a couple minutes, make sure everything's all well incorporated. Now, you grab the scissors. Now you're going to just basically fold in about a cup of chocolate chips into your batter. So we're going to just eyeball it because in my opinion you can never have too many chocolate chips. So that's good. So you want to make sure you do scrape everything. See the little bit of flour on the bottom? So what you're doing with the chocolate chips anyway, you're folding those in. So you just want to scrape up everything. 
make sure everything's very well mixed. Now I like this bowl here because it has the pour and spout. And now you're just going to pour in. Even though it is my birthday cake, I probably won't even have a slice. <laughs> Take that to the side. Let's bring you over to the stove. Because I always like to do this for you. We're going to throw that into our oven. Okay, so we threw that into our oven. We're going to let that bake for about 45 to 50 or so minutes. To tell when it's done, you just insert a knife. If it comes out clean, you're done. But I'll show you that later. Okay, my timer is going to go off at the 45 minute mark. However, I'm checking it now at 42 minutes to, that it's been cooking. So let's take a peek at it first. We're done. So in my oven, it took about probably 40 to 42 minutes to bake. All ovens vary, so um, make sure you keep an eye on your cake. So at around 40 minutes, just start checking it. Or else you're going to wind up with a burnt cake. Nobody likes a burnt cake. Okay, so we're going to let that cool on a cooling rack for about 10 minutes or so. And then we're going to turn that out onto a plate. Over there, I have to sit over there is some potatoes. I'll be making some mashed potatoes later to go with my uh, shepherd's pie that I'm making tonight for my dinner. So yeah, let's go back to this cake over here. Let that thing cool. We'll be back. So my timer went off for 10 minutes on the cooling on this. So it was still fairly hot to the touch, so I'm not going to take that out yet. So we're going to give it another more, 10 more minutes. We'll be back. Okay, so our cake has been cooling off. So now it's nice and warm to the touch. It's not hot. It's not cool. It's nice and warm. Because we're going to get all fancy today. I got my cake dish out. Slap that right on the pan. If you don't have one of these, a round plate will do just as well. All right, anyway, so what you want to do now is you just want to say a quick little, I don't really pray, but, you know, we can say, you know, good thoughts. Let's go. Come out of this pan. So one, two, three, whoops. Okay. All right, place bets. Will it come out all in one piece or will it be a chunky mess? <sighs> okay, ready? We got a, we got a, we got a bad one. Oh, look at that. Now it happens. It does. All bunk cakes. That's the beauty of a bunk cake. You just don't know until you flip them out. Just make sure you grease and flour your bunk cake really well. But that's fixable. Because we're going to make a ganache and put that over it. This is my cake, so it does not have to be perfect. And I'm not a chef, so yeah, home cooking by Sue. Mm -mm. All right, so see how I got the little pieces here? I'm tasting it now, and it's really, really good. And I think what happened was why I lost this big chunk. See all the chocolate chips that fell on the bottom? That's, a, that's what I think happened. If you know what happened, let me know in the comments. I can take criticism. It's fine. But the cake is really good. We're going to let this cool down so it's really cool, and then we're going to be back to um, put some ganache on it. We're making up some ganache, and in my pan I have about an inch of water. We're going to bring that up to a simmer. Right now the burner's on high. I'm going to put a half a cup of heavy cream. This is what it will look like in your grocery stores, heavy cream, or you can use heavy whipping cream. They're the same animal, basically. So we're going to get this nice and warm. You can do this procedure in the microwave. I just don't choose to use a microwave. So as this is coming up to a simmer, we're going to bring this down to medium heat. All right, we're just going to throw this all together. Yeah, that one's still warm. Okie dokie. So let's just watch this and we're going to let that melt. Well, you don't have to watch it. I'll make a short video for you. So you See how that's boiling? You don't want that boiling. So we're just going to bring that down to number two. Once this starts melting, it goes pretty quick. 
So let's recap. We have a half a cup of heavy cream to one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Let's get a fork. So what you're doing is just mix the chocolate so it's nice and shiny and melted and blended. Blend, blend, blend together. So this is almost done. Let's, let's pull this off the heat. We're done with that. Turn the burner off. Cometh with me. There's my pathetic looking cake over there. So what you're doing with your ganache is you're just going to drizzle this over your cake. It doesn't matter how it goes on. Just throw it on. You can take advantage of that little hole that fell apart and just someone's going to get a bonus. Ganache. Now you do want to make sure that your cake is cooled down. This probably isn't, but I'm just trying to rush and get everything done. And I'm an impatient type of person, so you know. Let's so just coat your whole bun cake. Now, the funny thing about my bun cakes, everybody always tells me it looks like a giant donut. Well, yeah, kinda. <laughs> but it's good donut. Let's make sure we got all the sides. See, you don't have to be really. It's good about this cake. You don't have to make it perfect. If you're a beginning cook, beginning baker, or if you're a kid and you want to make a cake for your mom or dad, this is how you do it. But like I said. I don't have a studio kitchen and people making my cakes for me and having that perfect one on standby in case of little mistakes like that. But you work with what you got, right? Okay, so that's enough babbling and playing. So, what did I see over here? See this big gloop here? We're just gonna slap that. Bring that up. So let's try to. There is no good spot. That will work right there, right? That will work. Anyway, the ganache is good. The cake was good because I already tried it. If you had to laugh at the results of the unveiling of my bun cake, give me a thumbs up. Don't be too hard on me in the comments because, you know, I do what I do. The cake mixture. And recipe itself is really good give it a try just like I said when you when you turned up the cake out of the pan make sure you let it cool down enough and just take your time with it or else you're gonna have like little bumps and valleys you know my channel subscribe hit that like button hit the bell the notification thingy that's what so yeah we'll see you later bye